Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. Parentheses, Sleeping Beauty. The story starts out uh, very similar, uh, that a king and a queen uh, really, really want a child, (laughs) and they can't have one. For some reason, the royal family is not capable of of, uh, reproducing, so they want to have a child, and they can't have a child, and then for like a long time. And then one day, uh, the queen goes and takes a bath, and she's bathing. So the tub's outside, the outside <laughs> tub patio. It's that kind of family. Like hot tub now. <laughs> really expensive bathtub. Um, and it's out in the back patio, and a frog hops on there. Okay, so the frog <laughs> tells the queen that uh, she's going to have her wish granted, and she's going to have a kid. And then they do. Uh, and it's beautiful child, Lola. And the king is like super proud and like, he's like, dude, he's calling all his friends. He's like, dude, I just have a really, really cute kid. So then he wants these fairies to come because mm-hmm. fairies grant people gifts and stuff. And so they come and he, but he only, there's like 13 fairies in the land and he only has 12 of these plates for the fairy that are set aside for fairies. And so only 12 can come and and the other one's just going to have to stay home because I don't have an extra plate. So he only has 12 plates. (laughs) The 13th fairy. (laughs) And so that fairy had to stay home. And then the fairies came and they're like, like, you know, like they grant this wish or they grant this gift. She's going to bestow this gift of beauty upon Lola. And then the second fairy comes up and she's like, I'm going to give you smarts. <laughs> smart. That's, that's what she said. She's like from the 1940s. She's like, I'm going to give you some smarts. Okay, the, the fairies each granted uh, Lola a gift of all the personality traits that um, one would uh, see in a perfect person. And then before the 12th fairy could give the gift, the 13th fairy that was not invited because they didn't have enough plates comes in and she's going to take revenge. Because that was her name. The what? fairy that didn't get invited because they didn't <laughs> have enough plates. That's her name. <laughs> she's like, I'm going to get revenge because she's really pissed that they didn't, didn't have, have a plate. plate. Chick's pissed off. She comes in and, and says some she's like <laughs> I don't want I don't it's I her fault. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't here because of that uh so you know it, she's she's gonna die now. Mm-hmm. But like not now. She's not gonna die now and she's not gonna die like when she's older. Uh when she's fifteen. She's going to prick her finger and she's going to bleed out. So she's going to prick herself on what they call a distaff, which is a spindle. And uh, she's she's uh, she, she's going to bleed out. And the fairy leaves. <laughs> Just like that. So the 12th fairy speaks up and like she's like, I can't undo it. I can't undo what the fairy that didn't get invited because they didn't have enough plates did. But what I can do is soften the blow. And and she's not going to die. She's just going to sleep for, like, ever. Like, longer than a human 100 sleep. years. If you sleep for 100 years, you're dead. <laughs> I guess the party ends because it's the way you end a party. The king, uh, he declared that all of the, the spindles be burned Mm -hmm. in the in the in the kingdom or whatever so that means that that he he felt pretty safe 
He was like, they're all gone. Doesn't, nobody can build another spindle. And then the kid grows up and Lola turns into this kind and beautiful and intelligent person. She now has all these traits um, that the fairies had gifted her. Uh, and it so happened that on her 15th birthday, she, uh, you know, her parents were like, Oh, I wasn't just warned that 15 years from now my kid's going to die. I'll go ahead and just leave the castle and leave her in the castle by herself. Uh, she's just, you know, wandering through the castle, I guess, and ends up in the tower and sees a door. And in the door, there's a key. There's a rusty key sticking out of the lock in the door. So this girl, Lola, pushes the key in and locks it and walks in. And there's an old lady at a spinning wheel. And she's like, Granny, what are you doing? <laughs> and then she's like, I'm, I'm spinning. She says, what's that uh, oh. mystical spinning bobber spiel? And Granny's like, she's like, Come try it, or come here, and mm. and she tries it, and she pricks her finger, and she falls down Conveni- on her bed. Conveniently like, on a bed. Yeah, <laughs> her bed. It's just right there hanging out. For some reason, I guess that made the entire castle, like, sleepy. Like, it was like a mm-hmm. sleepy potion went on the castle. It was... Uh, they, they were all gassed and they pass out. So everybody in the castle falls asleep. Um, the king and the queen enter the castle from whatever they were doing because they assumed their kid was going to be safe. They came in and just passed out by their thrones. The horses the horse. passed out at the stable. So I guess it extended past the castle unless it it's castle part of the grounds. castle. So the, then the the dogs and the cats and the doves and the flies mm-hmm. on the walls and, and the fire and the fire even died down and, and the meat and the meat stopped crackling because I guess that that's a sign of it being awake mm-hmm. and now it's asleep and the cook and, and the cook he was about to beat the out of a scullion a servant. In the kitchen that does menial tasks. About to pull on his hair because he did something stupid. And uh, then he just let him go and passed out. And I assume the servant did as well. The fairy that didn't get invited because they didn't have enough plates. He just flew off. And then the the castle got covered in this briar rose hedge. There's thorny vines and stuff. Yeah, really, really dangerous. Because for a hundred years, a bunch of princes would come and try, they would hear tales of the briar rose, which was referring to Lola because I, I guess she was amidst the hedge of roses and she was the rose that they were trying to get um and she was beautiful so the 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 princes that attempt to save this chick uh they get into a uh and they have like dig their way through the briar rose um the hedge of briar rose (laughs) and they uh they they get stuck and like stabbed and poked by all the thorns and stuff and then they die miserably and then uh, 100 years later, yeah, the time's about up, right? This guy was like, well, I have to see her. She's this beautiful. I have to see her. And the old man that told him the story of Briar Rose, or the Briar Rose, was like, no, please don't go. Like, you're just going to die a miserable death like everyone else did. But he didn't listen. And he went. And he actually got through it just fine. And he went and he saw all the people that were frozen and that the fire was frozen and he kept going in and in, in, in the castle. He's running through this castle and it's like he, so quiet. Um, all these frozen people, uh, there's, they don't make noise. So it's real, real quiet and he can hear himself breathe. He gets up into the tower. Yeah. So he's at Briar Rose there. So he walks up to her and he was like, holy she's beautiful. That frozen chick is hot. Yeah. So he kissed her. 
The horses in the stable stood up and shook themselves. The hounds leaped about and wagged their tails. The doves on the roof lifted their heads from under their wings, looked around and flew into the fields. The flies on the wall began to crawl again. The fire in the kitchen roused itself and blazed up and cooked the food. The meat began to crackle and the cook box, the scullion's ear so soundly that I screamed loud <laughs> while the maid finished plucking the fowl. Yeah, so he, he she wakes up after he kisses her and uh, he's like, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll marry you or something. But yeah, they her. look at each other and they sit with each other. <laughs> yeah, so these are amazing lips, and they made they just. She woke up and felt refreshed. She was like, "I got a pretty good nap in, and I'm now I'm into this dude." So, uh, she gets just sits with him, and I guess they talk about each other, what they've done in their lives, and. Now that she's 115, he's probably like 20. They're not dead. They're alive. <laughs> they're alive. And they're trapped in the castle because Briar Rose didn't come down. So that now they're married and lived happily until they died. The, the end. end. Close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.